Just uh, put a couple of Dallin Thomas things for my friends. Fellow, fellow appreciators of Mr. Dylan Thomas from Kumdongkim uh, Street Park. Ah, uh, yeah, right, a couple of things to put together, right? Uh, camera action. Oh, start. When I was a windy boy and the bit and the black spit of the chapel fold, sighed the old ramrod dying of women. I tiptoed shy in the gooseberry wood. The rude owl cried like a telltale tit. I skipped in a blush as the big girls rolled, nine pin down on the donkey's common. And on seesaw Sunday nights I wooed whoever I would with my wicked eyes. The whole of the moon I could love and leave all the green leaved little weddings' wives in the coal black bush and let them grieve. When I was a gusty man and a half, and the black beast of the beetle's pews, sighed the old ramrod, dying of bitches. Not a boy and a bit in the wick dipping moon and drunk as a new dropped calf. I whistled all night in the twisted flues. Midwives grew in the midnight ditches, and the sizzling beds of the town cried quick. Wherever I dove in a breast-high shoal, wherever I ramped in the clover quilts, whatsoever I did in the cold black night, I left my quivering prints. When I was a man, you could call a man, and the black cross of the holy house sighed the old ramrod, dying of welcome, brandy ripe in my bright face. One Christmas was so much like the other in those years around the sea town corner now. Out of all sound except the distant speaking of the voices I sometimes hear a moment before sleep. That I can never remember whether it snowed for six days and six nights when I was twelve, or whether it snowed for twelve days and twelve nights when I was six. All the Christmases roll down towards the two-tongued sea like a cold and headlong moon bundling down the sky that was our street. And they stop at the rim of the ice-edged, fish-freezing waves, and I plunge my hands in the snow and bring out whatever I can find. In goes my hand into that wool-white, bell-tongued ball of holidays resting at the rim of the carol-singing sea. And out come Mrs. Prothero and the firemen. It was on the afternoon of the day of Christmas Eve, and I was in Mrs. Prothero's garden waiting for cats, with her son, Jim. It was snowing. It was always snowing at Christmas. December, in my memory, as white as Lapland, although there were no reindeers, but there were cats. Patient, cold, and callous, our hands wrapped in socks, we waited to snowball the cats. Sleek and long as jaguars and horrible whiskered, spitting and snarling, they would slide and sidle over the white back garden walls, and the lynx-eyed hunters, Jim and I, fur-capped and moccasined trappers from Hudson Bay off Mumbles Road, would hurl our deadly snowballs at the green of their eyes. The wise cats never appeared. We were so still, Eskimo-footed Arctic marksmen in the muffling silence of the eternal snows, eternal ever since Wednesday, that we never heard Mrs. Prothero's first cry from her igloo at the bottom of the garden. Or if we heard it at all, it was to us like the far-off challenge of our enemy and prey, the neighbor's polar cat. But soon the voice grew louder. Fire, cried Mrs. Prothero, and she beat the dinner gong. And we ran down the garden with the snowballs in our arms towards the house, and smoke indeed was pouring out of the dining room, and the gong was bombolating, and Mrs. Prothero was announcing ruin like a town crier in Pompeii. This was better than all the cats in Wales standing on the wall in a row. 
We bounded into the house laden with snowballs and stopped at the open door of the smoke-filled room. Something was burning, all right. Perhaps it was Mr. Brotherow, who always slept there after midday dinner with a newspaper over his face. But he was standing in the middle of the room saying, A fine Christmas, and smacking at the smoke with a slipper. Call the fire brigade, cried Mrs. Prothero as she beat the gun. They won't be here, said Mr. Prothero. It's Christmas. There was no fire to be seen, only clouds of smoke, and Mr. Prothero standing in the middle of them, waving his slipper as though he were conducting. Do something, he said. And we threw all our snowballs into the smoke. I think we missed Mr. Prothero and ran out of the house to the telephone box. Let's call the police as well, Jim said, and the ambulance. And Ernie Jenkins, who likes fires. But we only called the fire brigade. And soon the fire engine came, and three tall men in helmets brought a hose into the house, and Mr. Prothero got out just in time before they turned it off. Nobody could have had a noisier Christmas. And when the fireman turned off the hose and was standing in the wet, smoky room, Jim's aunt, Miss Prothero, came downstairs and peered in at them. Jim and I waited very quietly to hear what she would say to them. She said the right thing, always. She looked at the three tall firemen in their shining helmets, standing among the smoke and cinders and dissolving snowballs, and she said, Would you like anything to read? When I was a windy boy and the bit and the black spit of the chapel fold, so Ooh. Oh, I hope you enjoyed my mini mix. I just, I just did it just now on my video editor. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Tidy the lad. Poor girly.